I am Dr. Satish Kumar, Consultant Shoulder and Knee Surgeon at SKS Hospital, Serum. Arthroscopic bank art repair is routinely done for recurrent shoulder dislocation problem. So, today we will see how the surgery is being done. So, initially we do a round of diagnostic arthroscopy. We uh, check for the routine uh, biceps head and glenoid and humerus head and we also check for the subscapularis and then we establish the antero inferior portal which is the first step in arthroscopic bank art repair first we insert the needle to establish the portal and then the knife 11 blade knife is passed it is uh, passed parallel to the needle and uh, then we pass the wissinger rod and we ensure that wissinger rod reaches our point of interest that is the five o'clock position and then we pass the cannula and once this is done, we go for the antero superior portal and we repeat the same step. First we pass the needle and then we pass the knife and then we pass the Wiesinger rod. And uh, once this portal is established, we switch our uh, portals and now we are viewing from our antero superior portal and we are establishing the posterior portal. We pass the Wiesinger rod and then we pass the cannula. The portal is established, then we look for the hill sack defect. It is the defect on the posterior superior part of the humeral head. So now we can see there is a hill sack defect here. So as the area rounded by the blue circle, you can see the hill sack defect. And now we are seeing the capsulolabral complex which is lying below the glenoid. It is uh, detached from the glenoid and it is lying down. The objective of our surgery is to raise this labrum and fix it back to the glenoid and also fix the hill sack defect. So bank art repair is the technique by which we raise the labrum and fix it back to the glenoid and remplissage procedure is the technique by which we address the hill sack defect. So bank art repair creates anterior tension and remplissage procedure creates a posterior tension. So along with this both tension, we the humerus head is kept in the center of the glenoid. So basically arthroscopic bank art repair with remplissage is a tensioning procedure. So we can see that uh, we are freshening the posterior superior uh, surface of the humeral head where the hill sack defect is lying. So once the area raw bone is uh, exposed, as you can see, the punctate bleeding is seen, which indicates that the raw bone has been exposed. We put the owl at the first point of contact of the posterior superior surface of the humeral head in the hill sack defect. Once that is done, then we insert the suture anchor where the owl was placed. So make sure that the suture anchor is uh, deep inside the head. It's not uh, proud. And once that is done, now again we use our uh, spinal needle as a guide for our bird beak. Now take a bite through the infraspinatus and take one of the suture threads and it is now taken out. Once that is done, again we take another bite through the infraspinatus with the bird beak instrument and take one more suture thread. So now we are uh, taking the white tiger, one thread has already been taken. Now we are taking the second thread of white tiger and make sure that you are holding the suture thread with the bite which was earlier taken so that the suture uh, thread does not get uh, dislodged. So we repeat the same step now with the blue, uh, suture, blue suture anchor thread. The first bite has been taken and the suture uh, thread has been taken out. And again, now we pass our bird beak inside, take one more bite. And now the last of the suture thread is also now taken out. And as said earlier, make sure hold the suture thread through which the bite has been taken earlier so that the anchor thread does not get dislodged. So now we have taken all the four bites and as you can see now that there is, it looks like a parachute. So we call this repair technique as a parachute technique. Now we pass the liberator through the antero inferior portal and we keep it exactly at the plane where the glenoid and the capsulolabrum uh, interval is present and then we mallet the liberator and liberate the capsulolabral complex. One important note during this step is that 
the liberator should be exactly in the interval plane between the glenoid and the capsuloliberal complex. In case we do not keep it in the exact interval and we just mallet it through the capsuloliberal complex, there is a risk of tearing or shredding the capsuloliberal complex and then the repair may not be satisfactory. So as we mallet the liberator, you can see that there is a fresh bleeding coming which is a sign that we are going in exactly in the right interval and now you can see that the capsuloliberal complex has been properly elevated and separated from the glenoid and now we will be preparing the glenoid bed. So we take an RF that is the radio frequency oblator and we just take a small amount of cartilage from the glenoid bed and we want to expose the raw bone. So once the RF has been taken to take out the small amount of cartilage then we can use the liberator we are exposing the raw bone which is the ideal environment for the capsuloliberal complex to heal. Now we take a bite at the 5 o'clock position and we have to take a nice chunky bite as you can see so that we can use this bite and insert it into our not insert it into the knotless fiber suture anchor and now we fix the suture anchor at the 5 o'clock position along with the repair. So as you can see the capsule liberal complex has nicely been seated at the 5 o'clock position. Then we take the next bite at 3 o'clock position with a suture lasso and try to take a ch nice chunky bite. So as you can see we are taking a good bite with the suture lasso and now as you can see the bite has been taken and we are passing the netlon wire for shuttling the suture thread of the suture anchor. Suture anchor has been inserted. Now we are taking one of the threads through the posterior cannula and we are shuttling the thread through the netlon wire. So now the suture anchor thread is through the bite that has been taken earlier. Now we apply the knots to complete the repair and as we have completed the rimplices procedure and now you can see that humeral head which was lying dislocated anteriorly and inferiorly is now nicely centered over the glenoid and hence the repair is satisfactory and we can complete the procedure. As you have seen, arthroscopic bank art repair is very safe and minimally invasive way of uh, treating disc recurrent dislocation shoulder. And when done for the right patient in the right indication I and mean, with the right surgical technique, arthroscopic bank art repair has a very good success rate.